You do share, and we all share, this dream of great expectations uh, for Philadelphia, and it's more than a worthy dream. Oscar Wilde once said that a dreamer's punishment is that he sees the dawn before the rest of the world. Like many of you, I've dreamed of a new dawning for Philadelphia, but quite honestly, I think it's time for all of us to stop dreaming. It's time for us to wake up. And I could not say it any better than Teddy Pendergrass and Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes when they talked about wake up everybody. It's time for us to wake up. We've done enough dreaming. We don't need to dream anymore because we know how to solve many of our own problems. We know actually what works. There's, there have been points in time where the crime rate in Philadelphia has been lowered. There have been times in Philadelphia where we were better educating our kids. There were times in Philadelphia where we were creating jobs and economic opportunity and hope. And we all know this, of course, uh, because Philadelphia is one of the most historical cities in America. We're also a great people and we have a great city and we need to get more comfortable in thinking about ourselves that way and talking about ourselves that way. And as I've said on numerous occasions, we just need to get over ourselves in many, many instances. It's time for us to think better of who we are and what we're about. We also know what works because we've seen it work in other places. We all know that change is possible. We have a city where our city streets are in fact safer and that it's tougher to get a gun and easier to get a book. An education system that helps our teachers better educate our ch children through graduation and as they go on to a better life. A government that is open and transparent and responsive and responsible to the people who pay for it. A mass transit system that is affordable, efficient, and clean. I'll take that. A park system that shows off not only our neighborhoods, but also respects our green space and we have a new attitude toward open space and making Philadelphia the number one green city in America. That's what Billy Penn gave us. <clears throat> a city that leads the nation in environmental standards and commits to sustainable development by changing our zoning code and our building code and rewarding companies that do that. And a city that works hard to keep our talented undergraduates and graduate students, over 300,000 of them, going to some of the best colleges and universities anywhere in the United States of America, that we can actually hold on to them because they want to be here. Now these are just some of the many changes that we can work on together. It's why you're here today. It's why you're committed to Philadelphia's future. We've talked a great deal about great expectations. This project has been tremendous. I'm going to ask you not to end it. There should be in the future a great expectations report card that either on a six-month basis or on an annual basis, both through the news media and in person, we give an accounting of what we've done based on the six days of reporting and two days each item. So even I think I can figure out that's about 12 things. There may be others. That we have an accounting and an agreement among ourselves that we'll take a look back and in the future of where we are on those items. That this should be a continuation of the great expectations that Philadelphians should have about this great city and about our great region. And so I don't know what Chris's plans are or the projects, but I would certainly ask that because I want you to hold me accountable. I'm a public servant. That's what all public servants should expect. You went out to the polls or whether you did or whether you didn't. You're a citizen here, you pay your taxes, you have certain rights expect certain things. But as the next mayor of this city, I also have some expectations of you. We laid out 13 public policy papers. I told you all the things that I plan to do, many of which are a part of the Great Expectations Project, and we agree on a lot of those things and many others we need to explore and examine. But this is not a one-way exchange. This is not a situation where you get to go to the polls, push a button, and go back in your house and sit by the remote. 
Democracy is a participatory process. It's a participatory process. And so it's not enough. It's just not enough to go out and vote. It's just not enough to pay your taxes. It's just not enough. I need more and I'm asking for more because if you think that somehow, some way, just electing me or putting 17 members in city council or all 22,000 of us in public service are somehow, some way going to change all of the problems and challenges here in the city of Philadelphia, I have another thought coming to you. That won't happen. It cannot happen without your active engagement and involvement. And so I have a few expectations that I'd like to share with you. Is it too great an expectation to ask that our parents pay more attention to our children than worrying about how to pay for the next video game, flat screen TV, or more clothes? Is that too much to ask? Is it too great an expectation to ask our neighbors to look out for each other because we really are our brothers and sisters keepers? Is that too much to ask? I don't think so. Is it too great an expectation to ask our young people to stay in school, to go to college or get a job and be productive rather than standing on the street corner, putting yourself in danger of being either a victim or a perpetrator of crime? I don't think that's too great an expectation. Is it too great an expectation to ask our parents to make sure that their children, you had them, you got to raise them? Is it too much to ask our parents to make sure that their kids go to school, do their homework, get a good night's sleep, feed them, clothe them, care about them, love them, wrap your arms around them, stop shouting and screaming at them, and talk with them like a parent? Is that too much to ask? Is it too much to ask our citizens to stop shooting each other and shooting at our police officers and killing people in the streets of Philadelphia? I don't think it's too much to ask. Is it too great an expectation that our communities and each of us would actually clean up and fix up and take better care of our homes and our neighborhoods and to clean this city up once and for all? I don't think it's too great an expectation to ask our business community to be as strong in their advocacy for more funding for public education as you might be for a tax break or a tax credit or anything else that goes on in our business environment. Lock arms with us and march to Harrisburg because investing in our children is a good business investment. That's not too great an expectation. Is it too much to ask all of us to have a little more positive attitude about who we are and what we're about and about each other and about this great city. Could we collectively lift our sense of self-esteem about this wonderful place called Philadelphia? I don't think that's too much to ask. That's not too great an expectation. And as I've said on a couple of times, it's not too great an expectation to just say hello. When you leave this great place here today, whatever time you go, the next person that you see outside, just say hello. A sense of civility in this city wouldn't hurt us, that we could actually be nice to each other when we see each other. Just say hello. And so I believe that together we can accomplish all of these great expectations and more. There really are no limits to what we can do, that we are only limited by our self-imposed limitations. This city is on the verge of greatness. Let us keep our expectations high because, ladies and gentlemen, it really is a new day. Thank you very much.